The uh, 3D implant positioning is key for optimal aesthetics. Placing the implant at the right depth and at the right angulation bacolingually will determine whether the implant will be successful in the future, especially in terms of uh, aesthetics. We want to have proper pink aesthetics. The depth is important. When we draw a line between the gingival margins of the adjacent teeth, we want to see that our the platform of our implant is placed about four millimeters deep. Placing the implant too shallow will not allow for an ideal emergence profile of the crown. An implant too buccal will determine whether that implant will develop recession uh, in the future or not. Different research has shown that the implant is placed too buccal. The restorative options will determine the uh, emergence profile as well. The chances of developing a recession are up to 17 times higher. Also placing the implant towards the palatal will allow the restorative dentist to fabricate a restoration that is a screw retained. So you want to see that gap in between the platform of the implant and the buccal aspect of about two millimeters or so. Especially uh, when we place immediate implants, we will be able to engage and uh, achieve better primary stability with our implant using the uh, palatal aspect of that alveolar process. Palatal bone is thicker than buccal bone and that will also allow for the uh, osseous tissue to fill in that gap. Whether you graft it or not, you will have better chances for achieving good aesthetics if the implant is placed towards the palatal. If the implant is placed at the right depth, so let's say about four millimeters apical, the restorative dentist will be able to create a much smoother emergence profile as opposed to having the implant too shallow. The angles will be much sharper and that will cause issues with not only with aesthetics but with plaque control. Using surgical guides will help you place an implant in a more uh, precise uh, location. Uh, definitely guided will allow you to be more precise with placement. If you are an experienced operator, most likely you may not need to use a guide for single units. However, when doing multiple units or full mouth rehabs, a surgical guide is uh, should be mandatory for precise implant placement. Apicocoronal positioning of your implant as well as the uh, buccolingual will determine the uh, aesthetic success. You don't want your implants too shallow. You don't want them too deep either but you don't want them above all your buckle. That will uh, inevitably lead to uh, recessions difficult to correct and the emergence profile of that restoration will not allow for proper aesthetics. So uh, we're gonna talk about briefly about the importance of the 3D implant positioning, which is particularly critical in the uh, aesthetic zone. The 3D positioning and CDCT data evaluation is critical. I always advise to evaluate the uh, cross-sections, the consecutive cross-sections of the uh, CDCT data for that particular case in advance. Um, basically, we want to eliminate any potential risk by addressing and, and locating the lateral structures. We want to have an idea of the uh, anatomy, bone thickness, and the amount of um, tissue that we have on the uh, site that we're going to place our implants, as well as we need to evaluate adjacent structures on, on the teeth, the location of the teeth and the presence of any potential preapical lesion. So critical, very important to evaluate each cross-section, each individual cross-section, which can be done uh, with most CGT data programs some uh, allow you only to uh, do a quick hoovering over the uh, site, which uh, definitely is not enough. Uh, you want to create uh, a picture in your mind of that site, and you will be able to do that much easier. Your brain will be able to process that, that information much easier when you have in front of you the uh, consecutive cross-sections of that site, uh, especially for the critical areas, the aesthetic areas of the uh, premaxilla. Uh, remember always that 
the 3D positioning is key, is critical. And so always picture in your mind and know that the uh, buccal bone thickness is significantly uh, thinner than the palatal bone. That's why we, we want to place our implants towards the palatal for two reasons, for aesthetic reasons and to avoid uh, aesthetic failures and recessions in the future if the implant is placed to buccal and for uh, to achieve better primary stabilities when the implant is placed uh, is engaging the apatal bone, which is thicker, uh, you will be able to get a better primary stability, more so when doing immediate implant placement. Uh, we have a number of research data has identified uh, the, uh, definitely the uh, aesthetic failures and the chances of getting an aesthetic failure, but basically uh, mid-facial recessions were significantly much higher, up to 17 times much higher when the implant solder was placed to buckle. So um, definitely uh, always uh, aim for the palatal for those uh, main reasons. And you can do this freehand and you can do it guided surgery. If you are an experienced operator, uh, you can do single units, can be easily done uh, freehand. Uh, when there are multiple units, you may need guided surgery, absolutely. But if you don't feel comfortable and you want to uh, do a more precise, 3D positioning guided surgery uh, is definitely uh, the way to go. So um, it is going to uh, reduce the stress and allow you to be more precise with your implant positioning. Remember, this is a good, really good article in Perry 2000 by Canon Coworkers, published in 2018. Uh, basically, you have uh, more better uh, chances of placing your implants, especially if you're doing immediates. Uh, when you have a favorable anatomy that is uh, more palatal bone, basically. You want to uh, avoid placing, doing certain procedures such as immediate implant placement when we have a class for uh, cellular root positioning. Basically, uh, it has to do again with the amount of uh, alveolar bone that we have Not enough thickness, both palatal and buccal. A stage approach uh, should be uh, definitely uh, the way to go. But uh, when it comes to, again, 3D positioning, uh, another important aspect is the bacolingual. So the two main aspects that you need to uh, uh, be looking for is the uh, depth of the implant placement, that is the apicoronal, ap and the bacolingual. The bacolingual can be more critical, especially when you have this type of configurations, the U and W shape, which basically, uh, um, tell you the uh, importance of uh, the uh, attachment levels of the adjacent teeth and the presence of bony defects and the hissing sets on the uh, buccal aspect. Imagine if you're placing an implant on a central incisor that has uh, seven, eight millimeters of um, buccal dehiscence of bone loss, the uh, chances of getting a recession may be significantly higher, especially if you have a uh, uh, moderate or severe attachment loss on the adjacent mm -hmm. teeth. We can compensate uh, the uh, basically uh, the uh, presence of severe buccal bone loss by doing certain techniques, such as the one we we uh, recently published in uh, JOMI and uh, clinical advances in periodontology, following the principles of periosteal guided bone regeneration. We can sometimes, uh, most of the time, we can reconstruct those severe defects using uh, the uh, cortical shield technique. Um, we can place the implants simultaneously and reconstruct that severe defect, on, especially on anterior implants, which are the ones that we need to be more careful with. Uh, again, the 3D positioning is especially important when we have buccal dehiscence and a thin biotype. Uh, if imagine this particular case, the lateral incisor, we were to place an implant on a uh, site that already presents recessions and attachment loads and black triangles, uh, we have to be more careful um, in terms of 3D positioning. We have to be more careful when we place that implant. So the depth is important as well as the uh, buccolingual uh, positioning. Always place your implants more Palatal. Now, in terms of um, depth, uh, 
it is being recommended a depth of about three to four millimeters. Um, now, when the adjacent teeth present attachment loss and recessions, such as, it, such as the case that you see on the screen, well, in these particular cases, we recommend to place the implant slightly more, slightly deeper. Um, but four millimeters or four and a half, uh, when we see recessions on the adjacent teeth, uh, it is actually uh, safer. Uh, all, all in all, placing an implant that is too shallow may uh, lead to uh, restorative complications and basically having not been able to achieve a, a smooth emergence profile when the restoration is delivered. So that the platform of that implant, you want it about four millimeters from the adjacent gingival margins. Again, if there is if there are presence of recessions, uh, aim for slightly deeper. And so the uh, palatal placement is also key. It will allow you to achieve good primary stability, especially if you have a configuration um, that the class two, class one, especially the class one configuration that allows you for better engagement of that uh, palatal. Well, you need to uh, evaluate your periapical radiographs. And don't be afraid to take a, a radiograph while uh, placing an implant. This was an immediate placement after extraction. The main reason why we took, I took this uh, radiograph on the left is to evaluate, make sure that I wasn't damaging the uh, root of the lateral incisor, which is uh, convergent, not divergent. Usually they are divergent. And when this is the case, we uh, need to be, we need to be place the implant in a much more precise situation without damaging the uh, roots of the adjacent teeth, uh, as well as vital structures such as the uh, nasoplatin uh, bundle. This precise 3D positioning will allow us to deliver uh, restorations that can be a screw retain, which is what you want. You want a restoration that is retrievable in case of uh, future uh, needs for adjustments or anything. The yeah, 3D positioning, when we place an implant also on a uh, more palatal position, you are going to see if you take a CT scan years down the line, uh, you should have an implant with significantly greater amount of buccal bone. Uh, if you were to compare it with the adjacent teeth, which is the case, this is an immediate, uh, the immediate uh, implant that you saw earlier. Um, the implant is was placed on a on a more palatal position, and as a result, you have you see more um, buccal bone, more a greater thickness, about millimeter, millimeter and a half thicker bone. You're going to see this when uh, you place your implant on the ideal uh, 3D position, which is again more towards the palatal, and the CT scan will show you that um, beautiful buccal bone uh, that was gained as a result of placing the implant more buccal. When you are placing multiple implants, um, absolutely, uh, I highly advise to do a surgical guide. You should do it guided. Uh, your surgical guide should be based on your wax up, basically. The uh, surgical guide it is not only going to be used at the time of implant placement, but previously at the time of augmentation. This is a case, a case that was uh, a stage. So basically we did the augmentation first and three to four months later, we uh, placed the implants. I placed those implants um, after augmentation. The surgical guide is going to allow you to um, basically uh, identify precisely the sites that need to be augmented. And later on, when you place those implants, you know that you have uh, the uh, augmented site will uh, present the volume required for uh, implant placement. This was done following the principles of periosteal guided bone regeneration. And again, that uh, surgical guide that was um, developed based on the WhatsApp will also allow the uh, restorative dentist to create uh, screw retain provisionals to guide the tissues further for uh, better aesthetics. Again, so when we are seeing these stage cases of atrophic ridges that need 
pre-augmentation prior to implant placement. The uh, 3D positioning is key. The surgical guide is key uh, that will allow us to identify the sites that need to be augmented for future implant placement. So you will be able to use that guide uh, actually twice during augmentation and later on after implant placement. Wrapping up all in all, basically a 3D implant positioning is key together with uh, CBCT data evaluation. You want to picture in your mind the uh, recipient site and take some individual measurements of its cross section that will give you uh, a better picture overall prior to uh, performing your surgery. Uh, freehand versus guided surgery. Again, if you are an experienced operator, um, you can do the definitely most single units freehand. Uh, when we're doing dealing with multiple units, multiple teeth missing and full mouth rehabs, definitely that should be done um, with guided surgery, with surgical stent that will allow you to place the implant precisely on the locations that the restorative dentist uh, needs them to be. An implant needs to be placed at a certain depth, four millimeters, three to four millimeters is fine uh, when there is thin biotype or existing recessions on the adjacent teeth, uh, place it uh, place it slightly deeper. Uh, again, four, four and a half uh, is, is definitely uh, recommended. But as far as the buccolingual positioning, uh, definitely never place your implants too buccal. Always try to, especially when doing immediate implants, engage your palatal bone. You will be able to get better primary stability and uh, definitely prevent aesthetic complications. Uh, every time uh, you place that implant, you're going to aim to do your osteotomy on the uh, palatal wall. Uh, and every time you see a good two or even three or four sometimes millimeters of um, distance from your the implant platform to the uh, buccal wall, you will be basically on, the, uh, on a safe zone. Feel comfortable taking during the surgical procedure uh, with your guide pins, take a, a periapical radiograph to, to double check that you are safe and you are not damaging the roots of the adjacent teeth. If you have any questions or comments, please leave uh, your questions and comments below. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if uh, you like the uh, content. There is more information coming up on both uh, Instagram and uh, this uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.